Hey guys, this is Heath with Pandacult Games. I'm here showing off Shovel Knight at Gen Con 2019. So this is Shovel Knight Dungeon Doom. So with any of you familiar with the actual game itself, Shovel Knight, the video game, we love it to death, we played it, and we had an absolute blast doing it. Now, the game has a co-op mode when you're playing the Shovel of Hope campaign. Now, in co-op mode, the fun thing about it is that whoever's got the most gold or defeats the most enemies will actually win the campaign. They'll win that level. So my partner and I thought it was hilarious. We started playing new levels and then actually defeating enemies, knocking them into pits, knocking our friends into pits, and then stealing their gold. So whoever got the most gold won. Well, we were laughing hysterically. So we reached out to Yacht Club. We saw if this is a possibility to make a board game for them because we already had an idea for a side-scrolling mechanic. And they said yes and loved it to death. So since then, we made Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels. So this game is a one to four player, fully competitive, side-strolling dungeon game. So you're going to be playing as one of a spectrum of Shovel Knights who are trying to prove that they are the truest Shovel Knight, and they do that by gaining the most gold. Now, they're going to gain gold by defeating enemies, by flipping over these treasure tokens, and either revealing a relic, or potentially a gem, which gems have a number on it, that means they gain that much gold as they're going through, and a relic is a familiar item for the game that we're gonna be able to pull from our relic deck here. Now, you're also gonna be able to gain gold by uh, attacking one of the Order of No Quarter at the end of the dungeon. Now, bosses work a little bit differently than that, but I'll get into that in just a second here. First off, we gotta get into the game, start beating up some enemies and beating each other up. Now, a hero could actually have three actions on their turn. Now, with those actions, they can move, and I'll, ex I'll explain with Blue Shovel Knight here. So he's gonna move one space, so that's one action. Now, with that action, he's also going to find a treasure token. So with treasure mound tokens, we're gonna flip this over, and I found a relic. So I'm gonna go over to my relic deck, I'm gonna flip this card over, and it looks like I found the Dust Knuckles. So Dust Knuckles, I'm gonna be able to freely move two spaces, it's an attack of four, and I'm gonna be able to attack all enemies in that path. I'm also gonna be able to move through walls. Moving through walls is really great because currently we're fighting in Pride More Keep, the Lair of King Knight. So Pride More Keep is all about controlling enemy lanes, uh, so these are three walls that you're not gonna be able to move through. But with Dust Knuckles, I'm gonna be able to do that, so I'm going to place that next to my knight. Also, relics have a secondary thing that they can do where if I wanted to discard this card, I can actually get two automatic successes to my next dice roll attempt. So these are one-shot items you can use in your turn, and unlike actions, you can use these for free. Doesn't matter if you have five relics, you can use all of them at the same time. So, Shovel Knight just moved with his first action and he picked up a treasure token. Now let's say he's got these two bone clangs in his square. Well, I don't like bone clangs. They're trying to cause damage to me. I'm gonna hit him first. So I'm gonna roll my attack. So on my hero card, I've got three and the shovel symbol here. That means that I'm rolling three dice. I'm looking for the shovel symbol for successes. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll and see what's up. I'll roll them right here. So it looks like I got two shovels. Now the bone clang has got zero defense and two HP. So two successes equals two damage, so the Bone Clang, clang is taken down. The Bone Clang is also worth two gold. So I'm gonna take two gold from my pile here and add it to my collection as Shovel Knight. So right now he's got five gold. Now this is a little bit scary in our game because he's got the most gold that now pins him as a target for other knights. So let's say theoretically it was another knight's turn and they wanted to spend an action to move in and attack Shovel Knight. Now it's not against, now it's not part of the Chivalrous Code cause damage to another knight. But luckily in this case, there's nothing in the code about pushing your friends in the pits. So what you could do is you can attack a friendly knight, let's say red's attacking blue. Red's gonna roll three dice for his attack, so he rolled two shovels. Blue's gonna roll two knight, or two dice for his defense. It looks like he got two armor. So in this situation, you would block that damage and he doesn't get pushed. But let's just say theoretically, oh no, blue didn't roll enough. So, two successes beats one defense, so what ends up happening is Red gets to choose what direction to push Blue in. So guess what, Red's gonna push him into a spike pit. Oh no, Blue loses half of his gold. That is unfortunate. So Blue is now in this pit, and he actually gets a relic card as a way of uh, forgiveness for dying. Now he's actually gonna pick up Mobile Gear. This allows him to freely move three spaces, and he gets to push all models in the square. Now since there's no attack option here, that's an automatic push, which is kind of dangerous. Now let's say it's red, so Blue took one action to be able to move on the space and use the second action to attack. And as a third action, he just wanted to stay put. Red just used one action to move in, a second action to attack Blue to move into his space, and now he's got this two gold over the spike pit. Now he can't just walk over that, he's gonna have to make a jump attempt to 
jump over that pit and try and pick up that goal. So jump, you're going to take two, and you're looking for this arrow symbol here. That means you're rolling two dice and you're looking for arrows. So Red's going to make an attempt to jump. <laughs> All right, so I rolled three arrows. That's more than enough successes. So you need one, two successes to get over that space in general. So Red would have actually made that jump, gathered this gold, and adds it to his stack as well. So that's how that works. Now, since he moved into a treasure tile, he'd actually get one extra gold from this because that's what got revealed. Now, let's say if Red theoretically didn't jump over that pit, and instead he only got one jump symbol. What that means is that Red would have accidentally jumped into that pit, he would have never gathered that gold, and he would have dropped half of his gold in that pit as well, so now that is more gold for other players to be able to gather. So that that's an example of heroes attacking other heroes, heroes moving and attacking and jumping over pits. Now, let's say theoretically it's the enemy's turn. And let's move our knights a little bit farther up. So, whatever enemies are going to be attacking in this game, they're always going to try and move one space and then they attack as a group. So melee characters like the Bone Clang, the Propeller Rats, and the Gold Armor are always going to be trying to attack you in the same space. So, these Propeller Rats are going to move one space and try to attack Yellow Knight right here. This Bone Clang's already in a space with Green Knight, so he's going to attack him, and this Gold Armor's going to try and move up, and this Propeller Rat's going to try and move up. So these guys aren't going to be able to attack this round, but these ones are. The Propeller Rats do an attack of one damage per Propeller Rat, and the Bone Clangs do one damage as well. So you combine that all together, so it's three damage coming towards Yellow Knight. Let's see if Yellow Knight can defend. All right, it looks like he didn't defend anything. So Yellow Knight takes three damage. We're gonna put that heart token on his card and he gets knocked back one space. Because in old school video games, whenever you got hit, you got knocked back. Just part of the deal. So Green Knight's gonna try and defend against the one incoming damage from this Bone Clang. And actually, we got two more damage coming in from his Wisdom since he's a ranged character. So we're gonna roll that. So let's say theoretically, he blocked that damage. So now he doesn't suffer any damage and he doesn't get knocked back. Now that represents one round of the game. So after heroes go and enemies go, here's what happens. I said it was a side scrolling game, so scrolls are gonna start sliding. So we got this tile moves over. If any models or uh, uh, um, treasure tokens or coins are on the board, those shuffle off, the coins are lost, they get added to the pile, the treasure tokens are reset into your pile, and then any hero left on there, guess what, they're dead for that round. They lose half their gold, added to the void, but luckily anytime you die in this game, you gain a relic, so it looks like Yellow Knight would have picked up the Chaos Orb, which is a pretty cool ranged attack. Now these tiles are gonna slide over, and then you're gonna add a new tile onto the board. So, that's how the side-scrolling mechanic works. Now, anytime you add a new tile to the board, you're gonna see these bone clang skulls. That means that you're gonna take a card from our spawn deck and flip it over, so it looks like I'm gonna spawn two propeller rats onto the board. I've only got one right now, so I'm just gonna place him here. So, I'm also got another bone clang, gonna draw another card. Looks like I've got a bone clang here, so I'm gonna add him on top of this tile as well. Now, this is also missing treasure tokens, so I'm going to add those in a checkerboard pattern here. Guess what? We're set up for the next round. Any knights who have been uh, defeated off the board, they're going to actually jump back on onto their turn. So let's say it's Blue Knight's turn. He's going to be able to choose to start his turn in any open space that is in the spike pit, and then start there and start doing his actions as normal, and that's going to rotate around. So that represents normal gameplay during this stage of the fight. But let's say theoretically, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> so, um, when are these randomized? Yes, these are randomized. So basically, you're gonna start the game with five of these planes of passage tiles, no matter what. But depending on the boss, you're also going to have five uh, tiles from their dungeon as well. So if you look at the tiles, this side is Plague Knight's Explodatorium. So these are going to have potion vats that you can actually drop onto the board. If you attack them, they explode and cause splash damage all around them. But the other side of the tile is King Knight's tile. So we've got a pile of these preset up. You're going to shuffle up five Plains tiles and five King Knight tiles, place them on top of each other, and that sets up your dungeon until you get into the boss fight. Thanks for asking me that question. It needed to be explained. <laughs> so whenever you run out of tiles in your tile track, what's going to end up happening is as soon as your characters move off the side of the board, as an example, let's say these are off and our heroes are on the left side of the board. Now, if we've got no more tiles that are actually being shuffled on or off, and we've run out from our pile over here, guess what? Now, we only have the boss tile left. So as characters move off the side of the board on their turn, they're going to lock themselves into that boss fight. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. 
I'm gonna just clear these off real quick here. You can wait there. The and I'm guessing the party's gonna move up with you to help. All right. Sauce. Yeah. Now we are officially going to, be yeah. 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 going to be getting into the boss fight. So, unlike the rest of the game, there's no more side scroll function to it. The boss fight is stationary. We are going to be fighting King Knight in this situation. So bosses work slightly differently than other models. So they're not going to just simply move and attack. Bosses are actually going to be operated by an AI deck. So, and they come with their own stat card. So, King Knight's got 15 HP, does two attack, do damage automatically, and has one defense. And at the end of this round, he has a special ability where he attacks a player with the most gold, knocks them down, and then attacks them. So, this is kind of your Kingmaker ability right here, pun intended with King Knight. All right, so, on top of that, King Knight's gonna be operated off this deck of cards. Now, you'll notice that this is a four x four grid. Now, if I flip over one of King Knight's AI decks, you're gonna notice that there's a four x four grid with red and white squares. Now, any red square is going to be end up being attacked by King Knight, and wherever his model is, is going to end up being where he shows up on the board. This is going to be the best way to track your boss. Now, let's see what ends up happening. So, we're going to put all of our heroes on the left side of the board to get the game started, and I'm going to be able to move these guys around. So, King Knight starts here, these knights start here. So, let's say it's Green's turn, he's starting us first. So he's going to go one, two, three actions. Now, he doesn't have enough actions to attack King Knight, so King Knight's going to end up going for his turn. So King Knight actually is going to attack all of these spaces, all of these spaces, and then end up here. So both green and red are going to have to roll their defense. Yeah, wow, now, in boss okay. fights, whenever you deal damage to a boss, you gain two gold. But if a boss attacks you and deals damage, you lose one gold. So let's see if green and red can a, a defend. So green's going to defend first. He doesn't defend anything. He gets knocked back one space. We're going to take two of his gold, drop it onto the board, and he's going to suffer two damage. All right, red's going to make an attempt. Let's see what's up. All right, so red didn't succeed as well. Now, since he's on the edge of the board, this is considered a wall. He gets knocked into it. He suffers two damage. And he drops two coins as well in the space where he suffered that damage. Now, whose turn is it next? It's Blue Knights. Well, Blue is going to go over here, steal that gold Red just dropped, because it's going to be devious, and move over to attack the boss. Now, whenever you're attacking a boss in this mode, what we're going to end up doing is, so let's say Blue Knight's attacking uh, King Knight. He's going to roll his attack. So King Knight's automatically got a defense of one. So I rolled four successes here. So that means that I dealt three damage, so I'm going to take down his HP. Now every damage I dealt, I'm going to get two gold. So two, t or two times three, six gold. I'm going to add that to Shovel Knight's pile. So you can see that boss fights really ramp up that gold. Now whoever actually ends up defeating the boss ends up getting five gold in total. So whoever has the most gold at the end of this dungeon wins. As a matter of fact, in this case, it looks like Blue Shovel Knight is going to have the most gold overall compared to all of his compatriots. So he proves that he is the truest Shovel Knight. Now this is just a simple example of how the game works with the normal rounds of boss fight. What we're also going to be able to have is on the Kickstarter, which is coming on in April the 13th, the base game is going to have three other bosses as well outside of King Knight. We're going to have Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and the Enchantress. Now, what's going to end up happening with the Kickstarter, if we fund the game and we actually get uh, the first stretch goal, the first stretch goal is going to unlock Plague Knight, King Knight, and Spectre Knight as actual playable heroes in the game. So you're going to be able to fight as them against Shovel Knights in the dungeon, which is going to add a lot more replayability into things as well. So there's a lot of familiar relics from the game, familiar enemies. Uh, there's going to be familiar locations from it as well. We have a lot of plans with stretch goals with this as well, so make sure you guys tune in. So, you got any questions for me? Uh, yes. Uh, the gold, is it only for victory conditions, or do you actually, like, buy stuff ah, with it? so I need to explain Chester, our boy here. So, Chester is actually going to be a merchant that is familiar with Shovel Knight fans. So, you can actually buy equipment from Chester in the game. You can actually buy relics in the video game. In our game itself, you can buy equipment. Now let's say, theoretically, we've got our Blue Knight, and he's on the square right there. Now, for one gold, for one action on Shovel Knight's turn, he's going to be able to buy an equipment. So we're going to flip that over so it looks like I got the Trench Blade. So that means that, from now on, instead of rolling two dice for my jump, I'm rolling three dice, which is pretty cool. Now, if Shovel Knight wanted to, he can also 
spend a second gold or two gold for a second item for another action and then he's going to get the dynamo mail which is plus one reroll here so equipment actually changes your base stats now the reason you do this it costs gold to buy it which is part of your winning goal but it also helps you and it invests in your fight against bosses. Now, there are going to be two opportunities through a normal dungeon to buy equipment from Chester early and later on in that dungeon as well. So, you're going to be a, have opportunities to buy that gear and actually carry it through with you. Unlike relics, they're not one-shot items. They carry with you all the way into your in-fight to the boss. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess you answered the other question about the uh, uh, how many bosses. Um, well, yeah, great. That's that's fantastic. This looks great. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're really excited about it. Like I said, the Kickstarter is coming on August 13th. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Pandacult Games, so it's the best way to be able to follow us and keep track of things. We're really excited. We're coming up on this Kickstarter soon after Gen Con, and uh, hopefully you guys can actually check out our game, see if you like it or not, and end up backing it. I also forgot to mention, for the Kickstarter itself, we're going to have two editions of the game. We're going to have the 2D and 3D version. So the 2D version is going to come with standees. It's at a little price-friendlier point of $35, and it's going to come with all the same other components as the game. The 3D version is going to be $70, and that's actually going to be the one available with all these beautiful minis you see before you. And if stretch goals start going well, we're going to add more minis into the space box and more standees into the 2D version as well. So we got lots of plans. We're really excited about it, and we need to get it out here soon. So awesome. any support we can get would be great. All right. Thank you, Heath.